anniversary of the death of Jesus, the day he, he was hung on the cross. And uh, on Sunday when we'll be coming uh, for service, we'll be celebrating the uh, resurrection, anniversary of his resurrection. And on Monday, when in our various families, we'll be celebrating his movement into Galilee. Hallelujah. I pray that all these seasons will mark positive difference in our lives in Jesus' name. And the reason why we are going to take the teaching on Easter before we go to communion service is so that we understand that Easter is not just a festive season. Easter is not just a holiday. You know, a lot of people must have traveled by now. I'm going to build my family this special holiday and things like that. Uh, there's a purpose for Easter and we will look at that purpose in the service today. Praise the Lord. Let's bow our heads and begin to pray. Let's ask that the, the Lord will speak to us again today. That his mind will reach us. Let's begin to pray. That Father speak to me. Let me hear my own word today. Jackie or Timi. Let's pray the Lord, let me hear my own word today in the name of Jesus. Are you praying? Lord, let me hear my own word. Let my own word reach me today. Oh God, in Jesus' name. Let me go home blessed. Let me go home blessed in the name of Jesus. Begin to talk to the Lord. Lord, at the end of the service, I'll be glad I came. Then begin to pray, commit the state of your health to the hands of the Lord. And Lord, as I take the communion again today, you will heal me from every form of ailment. I'll be strong and healthy. And there will be strange and strong hunger for righteousness in me. Lord, my hunger to serve you and to do your will shall be very, very strong. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Precious name, we have prayed. And let the church say, Amen. Thy amen is weak. And let the church say, Amen. amen. Hallelujah. I have two things to teach us today, which after we take uh, the blessed bread and wine, and uh, we begin to run with the strength that we have in Christ. Now, the two things... I tie to it, don't forget the title to is Easter. And I'll tie to the things I'll be teaching you lessons. So let's look at the first lesson uh, from Easter. Easter is not just a celebration, don't forget. Easter is not just a festive season. What's the first lesson? God demonstrated his love for us when he gave his only son to redeem us from the bondage of sin and satan so when we talk about easter i'll read it again easter excuse me is a demonstration of the love of god uh, what's lesson one god demonstrated his love for us god demonstrated his love for us when he gave his only son to redeem us from the bondage of sin and satan god demonstration demonstrated his love for us when he gave his only son to redeem us from the bondage of sin and Satan. Now that will be our first lesson. We're going to start looking at scriptures. So anytime you look at, you, you, you are privileged to see any Easter season, don't just look at the festive aspect. Always remember that it was a time of sacrifice that God demonstrated his love for us. Let's start with 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1. Shagada basenelese. Reba babase. Laba soto yengadabas. Are you there? I, I, I read. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father had bestowed upon us look at that that we should be called the sons of god therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew 
knew him not. But look at the first phase. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us that we should be called his children. Now, everyone that was born on the earth was born into sin. You know why we're born into sin? We're born into sin because Adam, by his own disobedience, brought the, uh, the entire generation of man into disobedience. So everyone was born into sin. And there was no way man can be redeemed except by sacrifice. An ultimate sacrifice. Now, and you know, the devil did not want to let man lose. And I know somebody will be saying, but God is God. He should have used his power as God. Now, that's one thing with God that you should understand. God is the one that makes the, 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 the word. It is his word. But the Bible says he exalts above everything his word and his name. He exalts above. So he himself lives under the authority of his word. Praise the Lord. Now, since he had said, if man should eat the fruit, man will begin to die. Now, when man ate the fruit, following the, uh, the instruction of, of this, uh, you know, deception of the, of the serpent, man sold himself to Satan. So, and there was no way man could be redeemed except there's an ultimate sacrifice. Imagine how much God loved you and me. He now gave his only begotten son. Okay, go and die. Go die for them so that they can be redeemed. That's why I see, if I'm you, Every Easter like this, it should be a season of renewal of both your love and your commitment to God. Every season of Easter. Let's look at more scriptures. Let's look at more scriptures. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, we are going to read a long reading from verse 10 to verse 21. Romans chapter 5, from verse 10 to verse 21. Hallelujah. We are looking at Easter and we are taking lessons from Easter. So always understand that Easter season is a season of demonstration of love. We should acknowledge the love that God has. Now look at this one he say again. He says, for if when we were enemies, look at that, we were reconciled to God through what? Through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. We were recon Even when we're living as enemies, you know, to the cross, we were reconciled back to God. By the death of Jesus. Now, next verse. And not only that, not and not only that, but we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have re now received what the reconciliation. What did we receive? We receive reconciliation, which means that you and I, by the death of Jesus, we have peace with God. Say, I have peace with God. Yes, God is your Father. By the death of Jesus, you and I have what. Peace with God. We've been reconciled back to him. Verse 12. He said, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered. Who is the man that brought sin? Adam into the world. Now, and death through sin. And thus, death spread to all men because, because all sin. When Adam sinned, the entire human race sinned. You know, somebody was asking me a question. One of us was asking me a question last week. He said, sir, that scripture that says, in sin, my mother gave back to me. In iniquity, he begat me. Uh, he said, does it mean that uh, uh, David was born by a harlot? I said, no. That it's an encounter. David was exp explaining that every mortal woman, every human being, born was born into sin because of the sin of Adam. Now, let's read on. Because of the sin of Adam, every human was born of, into sin. Therefore, look at this. Just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because of because all sinned. When Adam sinned, everybody sinned. Now, what now happened? Next verse. Next verse. We have a long reading. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Verse 14. Now, now look at the price that Jesus our Lord paid. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over to those who had sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam. Who is the type of him? Sorry, who is a type of him who was to come? Adam was a type. So everybody sinned when Adam sinned. That's why man died because Adam sinned. Now, after that, now look at the coming of Jesus. Yes. Now, but the free gift. Is not like the offense. For if by the if by one man's offense many died, 
much more the grace of God and the gift of God by the grace of what? The one man, Jesus Christ, abounded unto many. So, which means Jesus, by his obedience to God and by his death on the cross, he reconciled me and you back to God. And by his death on the cross, today we have grace. Because if sin could come through at Adam, life and grace came through Jesus. Let's read on. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one, one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many, from many offenses, sorry, many offenses uh, resulted into justification. Next verse. For if by the one man's offense death reigned through, through, through the one, much more those who receive abundance of grace of the gift of righteousness will reign in life. Through whom? Through the one. Who is that one? Jesus Christ. So what he did on Easter, we are reading on, we'll get to the last verse. What, what he did uh, at Easter, on Easter day, listen, was paying the price for us to have peace with God. So I want you to understand that Easter is not just a festive season. It's not just a time to kill chicken, eat rice. No, it's a time to reflect on the ultimate price that God paid for you to be saved. He loves you. Say, God loves me. If the devil is telling you that God doesn't love you, because of one thing or the other you don't have, listen, I want you to know that there is nobody in this life that can give his beloved son in order to save you from anything. Only God can, could do that. Let's read on with that scripture. I want us to finish it. Hallelujah. Therefore, as true as, as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so also by one man's obedience, many will be made righteous. People like me, I'm righteous because of Jesus. See, I'm righteous because of Jesus. I didn't hear you. I'm righteous because of Jesus. Say it again. I'm righteous because of Jesus. So understand his love. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abound, grace abound much more. Look at the last verse. Verse 21. Yes. So that as sin reigned in death, even so grace might reign through righteousness to eternal life. Through whom? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know, I sat down today in the office and I was just thinking about this Easter season. Every season like this, I have time to think. I was just thinking about Easter. That, ah, ah, can I give my son to save anybody's life? I don't think I can do that too. I can't do that. God gave Jesus up so that me and you can be redeemed. Now, do you know that before now, nobody could bind the devil? In the Old Testament, before Jesus came, nobody could bind the devil. But when Jesus came to offer himself, God said, okay, go offer yourself as a living sacrifice for man to be say, saved. Man now begins to have authority. So every Easter like this, use it to renew your love for God because he first loved you. Even your biological parents cannot love you like that. Baba to be wa o lefeno wa bi bi Olorun se feno wa e to fi omo kan sisu to ni. So gbogbo igba ta ba ti lori ofe ati ma ri Easter ki kan se ke ka pade e ki se pe ka je ka jere si ki se pe ka jade ka lo ma se pe a nso dun no e je ka ma ran ti pe a a a a Olorun ma mo mo yo da omo kan sisu e lo ku fun won kan le ba de ni ra pada. So what's our first lesson? Always remember that Easter season is a season that God demonstrated his love for us. Hallelujah. God loves me. That's why I'm not moved by what I have or don't have. You know what makes me happy? I'm happy because I am God's beloved. Now, I love this second lesson. Just come down a little bit, please. I love this second lesson. Look at this second one. Another lesson I learned from Easter is this. Look at this. I learned from Easter that God had a long-term plan. God had a long-term plan and he executed this plan and he went ahead to achieve it. Now, and what should be my lesson? I learned from Easter, I will explain that me myself should have a long-term plan. Now, look at this. The Bible says, and uh, there was this call, whom shall I send? Whom shall go for us? 
because God wanted man to be redeemed. Now, and he didn't just say, okay, I want man to be redeemed. Jesus, now, go down to the earth now. Jesus didn't appear as a full-grown man. He came in the womb, was carried for nine months, was delivered as a child. And do you know that the ministry that he was to carry out will, uh, 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 was planned that he, he will begin at the age of 30. Look at how many years God waited. God waited for 30 years, nine months. Now, it's not that he was waiting for anything. He had the plan of 30 years time. I want us to learn this. Let's be like God. Let's not just be living for the immediate. Let's not just be living for the immediate. Let's begin to dream of 20 years. Let's begin to dream of 30 years. Let's begin to dream of 50 years. You know, when I was studying the scriptures today, that was what I saw, that God sat down and he said, okay, I want to send a Messiah that will go and deliver my people. And he allowed that Messiah to go as baby in the womb. 30 years plan. Now, Jesus did the ministry for, he started at the age of 30. He did it for three years. Which means, the plan that God wanted to execute will be for three, 33 years. Now, look at when he started. And, he, and it has been a plan in his mind ever before Jesus was born. Now, what should be our lesson from Easter? Let us learn to have long-term plans. How uh, do you put it in Yoruba language? Let's, speak, let's just understand. Let's begin to have long-term. Let's not just be living for now. Now, and that's why you see that things happen suddenly to people. That Jesus will come and die for us was not an overnight plan. It was not something that God just woke up and just say, okay, Jesus, go down now. No. I had this in mind. When it was time, he started, you know, executing. We are going somewhere. We are going to learn something today. Praise the Lord. God, the creator of the earth, had a long uh, arranged plan that the harvest will come in 33 years time. God is not against us having a plan. Every child of God should understand this. God is not against us having a plan because we have seen here that he himself did not just wake up and say, Jesus, go now. He had a long-term plan. Jesus came as a baby. God allowed him to grow in the womb. God watched him as he was growing as a baby. He crawled. He walked. He ran. He, from one year to two years to years and after 30 years the bible says the spirit of god descended upon him like a dove the spirit of god descended upon him like a dove and john the baptist told everybody he said this is the lamp of god that taketh away the sin of the world look at how god organized his things and that's what i want us to learn today let's confirm more of this in proverbs chapter 16 verse 3 let's read from the niv version you will see that God is never against any Christian making plans. Because some of you will say, ah, man, well, ah, there's, there's, well, God, my, my, my life is in the hands of God. God knows it. No, a child of God should have what we call both short and long range plans. Let's have it. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 3, the NIV version. The NIV version. Proverbs 16 and verse 3. Leba sataya gadabaske. Can we have it in the NIV? Proverbs 16 and verse 3. This is Romans 16. Proverbs. Proverbs. I'm waiting for you. Proverbs 16 and verse 3. Maybe the thing has hanged somehow. It says, Commit thy works unto the Lord. Now the King James Version used, And thy thoughts shall be established. Now where the King James Version used your thoughts, your thoughts is your plan. The NIV Version says, And your plans 
shall be established. Now, can you see that God is never against us making plans? As a child of God, you must learn this too. During Easter, every Easter time, you sit down to reflect on something. There are some things we are going to also see during the weekend. We should learn to have long-range plan. Jesus did not come as a, as a matured Messiah. He came in form of, of, of a baby. He was formed in the womb. God had a plan. He had a purpose for his life. That's why I'm praying for you. The purpose of God for your life shall be accomplished. When the woman got pregnant of him, nobody knew that he was the Messiah. Except for those that God revealed to. When he was born, nobody knew he was the Messiah. If it were days of diapers, he used diapers. But God had a plan. I love the way God was patient enough for his plan to mature. When Jesus clocked 30, it was time for him to go into ministry. So every child of God should understand that, listen, you must have a plan. I wrote here, many believers today do not have a long-term plan at all. All they do is to live for the immediate. That's why you see them in prayer meetings. Uluwa, oh yeah, bless me now. Uluwa, bless me now. Oh God, open this door now. No. It's not, it's, it's, it's not that it's not good to pray. But as a child of God, you must have a plan alongside. Quickly, let's go into it. How do you make plans as a child of God? How do you make plans? You must know how to make plans so that you can know how to get plans accomplished. How do you make plans as a child of God? How do you make plans as a child of God? Number one, the destination must be clearly dreamed about. Now, the destination must be clear in your mind. The destination must be clear in your mind, which means the picture of what you want to see happen must be clear in your mind. That's the first thing. You don't have a plan when you don't have a destination. Now look at, God wanted a Messiah that will die for the whole world. He wanted a Messiah that will be the sacrificial lamb. Now, he said in heaven, whom shall I send? Jesus volunteered. He, he came as a baby into the womb of Mary. No man met him. Met her, sorry. And they said, that which is in Mary is of the Holy Ghost. But look at, he didn't start with God executing anything. He started by him having the picture of a Messiah in mind. How do you form a plan? You form a plan first by getting a destination. Now, what is that? No, it must start with a picture in the mind. Am I communicating? Now, for instance, I have a desire to be a solid man of God. I don't just want to be any kind of pastor. I want to be a solid man of God. That has been the picture in my mind. I want to be a solid Christian. You know, at times when uh, people come to see me for counseling, they come to my office to see me and they ask me questions and I'm able to answer those questions from scriptures, I am happy. That this is my dream. I remember one year, one particular year, we went, I went for a, a program at IFE. It was uh, students that invited me, government, college students all over Nigeria. They say they do it once a year. So government college or your government college, uh, uh, different states, they gathered together and they, it was a camp meeting and I was their guest. Now, by the time I finished preaching, I was with them for three days or so. By the time I finished preaching, I wanted to go and they said, sir, we have questions. We have questions. And you know youths with their questions. When they lifted their hands, they were asking serious, of serious questions that I did not even prepare for. But thank God that I was a studious minister. Now as they ask questions, I will just tell them at the, at the media, please put this on screen for everybody to see. One of them asked, he said, sir, covering of hair, is it a sin? If I don't cover my hair, will I go to hellfire? I said, put this in, on screen. I told them, put the scripture on screen. We read. By the time we read it, when I gave answers, they were cleared. Another one says, sir, uh, what if I put on trousers? I said, now put on screen, so, so, and so. You know, by the time we spent one hour answering questions, they were clapping. And when I myself was going, I was happy. That, ah, this is the vision I have. A plan does not start with a plan. It starts with one. What's the foundation of every plan? A dream, a vision. What kind of life, what kind of realm do you desire to enter? That's the first thing. Now, and once you have that picture in your mind, hear me, you go to the next thing, in forming a plan, conclude in your mind 
that you want to see it happen. That's the second thing. Don't just have a, a plan, a vision in your mind that you don't want to see happen. You know, there are people that have pictures in their mind, but they don't believe it can happen. Today, I had some guests. They came to see me from uh, a company and they said they want me to go to Jerusalem. So I now said, okay, how much will it cost? They told me the, what it will cost. Ah, I said, I don't think I'm ready for Jerusalem now. Everybody said, sir, you can make it, you know, if you don't make this year, you can make January. And we discussed, they showed me that, sir, if, if you can be saving so, 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 and so, every month with our company, you will achieve it. Now, listen, you know why I'm telling you this? I'm telling you because what they said made me believe that I can achieve it. If you have a vision that you don't believe you can achieve, forget it, you cannot achieve it. For God to attain, you know, his dreams, what he himself won. Listen, he believed that it will happen. Jesus will go, become the Messiah. And it happened. Like, so the, after you must have seen the vision, the next thing is for you to believe that you can attain it. Can you do it? If you say, I'm not sure, you are not yet ready. Can you do it? If you say, yes, by the grace of God, I can do it. Then you are ready. So what's the second thing again in being able to make plans conclude that you want to see it happen or else it won't happen number three after you must have concluded that you want to see your plan happen what's the third thing to do to achieve your pl plan conclude on how much you will need to put excuse me you will need to put into your savings part time that's the next thing conclude on how much you will need to put into your savings now can you see that i've not talk, talked about the time that you will achieve your plan you don't set time after vision now it comes like this vision first the second one is can i do it that means you you gather what we call um um conviction can i do it yes the next thing is not, okay, I will do it in three years. No. The next thing you should do is sit down, calculate. How much can I invest part-time? Is it When I say part-time, is it weekly? Is it daily? Is it monthly? Is it quarterly? Are you getting what I'm saying? What can I be doing in order to get to that plan? Now, once you are able to conclude on how much from your investment, from your, you know, you can be removing to save. That's what will determine the number of years. Did you hear me? I'm not sure you. Some of you had. That's what we determine. But you know, some people just say, Lola, tomorrow I will achieve this plan. You have not asked yourself, how much will I need to be saving per day, per week, per month? Now, and when we talk about savings, don't only think of, of finance. So there are some vision you have that doesn't need money to achieve. There are some vision you have, what you need to achieve it is for you to be just like I read. Uh, a book from John Maxwell. He said there was this very big tree in his compound. He wanted it to be chopped down. But he didn't have money to get the companies to come chop it down, to bring it down. He said, so he decided, I will ask this tree, Mama Afia Ake Lu, Le Manu, Lu Jumo. He said, somebody now ask, ah, sir, why not just be hitting it you might bring it down. i said no i won't focus on one dream so that i can do other things because some people focus on one thing and forget about every other thing and before they come back this one i've spoiled he said so you know what this big tree i will ask it five times or seven times or ten times every day pa 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 once i've done ten this is my daily contribution to bringing this tree down then i'll go and face something else it is your commitment that will determine how long. Do you understand? Now, John Maxwell now said, after doing it ba, ba, 10 times, he will go and do other things. He said one day, he was shocked as he got there to do another thing. By the time he got to seven, the tree came down. Your plan is achievable. But how do you form a plan? I've taught you. How do you form a plan? Number one, you what? 
dream it, vision it. See it in your inner mind. What's number two again? Believe that you can reach it. Then what's number three? Conclude on what you will do on a daily basis, not daily, part-time basis to get there. So how do you want to do it? You know, I told you from my experience too, many years ago, rent used to be a problem to me. Have I first some wooly? I have first some wooly school? If it's church, you want to buy it, you want to buy it, you want Mama, but so one day I was praying. We wanted to pay church rent. Is it church or house rent? I can't remember the, any of the two. I knelt down. The altar was praying. Lord, rent. Lord, rent. Lord, you know I was praying, and God said, "You don't pray about rent. You plan for rent. You don't pray for rent." I said, "Lord, I don't understand." He said, "You don't pray for rent. You plan for rent." He said, "I will give you this particular rent." but don't ever come to talk to me about rent again. That was the last time I prayed for any rent. So when I had that, I went back, I came back and I sat down and I formed a plan. And I discovered that I would need to be doing weekly contribution. I calculated my rent for a whole year and I divided it into weeks. We have 55 weeks in a year. The law says, say, Timon yo ye buy, Timon li ye buy, Timon juicy become, Timon li ye buy, Timon juicy become. Do you know I did the first one? It was successful. That was the last time I prayed for rent. See, I hear. So, what's number three again? Conclude on how much you will need to put aside in your savings part time. She weekly lo ma save. She monthly lo ma save. She quarterly lo ma save. She daily lo ma save. Concluded. That is what will determine the year and the day you will meet your dreams. Then let's take number four. Number four. Set your We need to change the battery. I turn last to switch off again. The battery is down. So, what's the fourth one? While they change my battery. Hallelujah. Thank you for bringing us back again. Now, back to what we're saying. What's the fourth thing to do? To now reach your plan. The fourth thing is set up. Sorry, set your startup time. When do I want to start doing what I need to do part time in order to get my vision achieved? Because see, if you don't start, your vision will, will die just a dream. Even if you believe in my ah, I believe I will get there. I believe I will get there. You don't start. It will, it will not happen. You have to start. Start removing that one that you need to be removing. Yes, you want to attain some level of spirituality and you say, okay, my daily contribution will be, I will increase my prayer time. My daily contribution will be, I will increase my time of studying the word. My daily contribution will be, you have to start. Set up a start. I mean, set your startup time. When do I want to start? You know, I told you that what you say you want to be setting aside is what will determine how long. I've, I have taught people in our church before even how to buy a car. I've taught people how to buy land. That all these things are attainable. And thank God I have proofs. I have people here. In fact, some of them are not even in service today. 
that have bought land, some have bought cars. I remember the first time we had this uh, testimony was Dick Nesolo. I thought like this, and she said she would be setting something out, and she was successful. She set something out for some months, and she came up to say, Sir, I bought the car. But don't forget, even if you have set up, set your startup time. When do you want to start? And you must not procrastinate about when you want to start. Do you get it? If you say, I'm going to start on Tuesday, I always want you to know that nothing good, eh? every good thing doesn't, doesn't want, uh, uh, how do we used to put it in Yoruba? The most difficult thing to, to start to do is anything that is good. The easiest thing to do in this life is things that will make you fail. You want to be best at in, in your you want to improve in your academic life. What when what when do you want to start? Now, and the fifth one, which is the last one under this point, is apply self-discipline to attain it. To achieve your plan, you need a lot of self-discipline. You must learn to tell yourself no. Because see, your body will not want to be in agreement. Oh, she must save Loshui. The next month now. Are you getting what? The, the body doesn't want you to do it. So you must learn to say, no. No, I won't do it. I won't change my plan. Listen, anything you have written down, if you don't a, a, apply self-discipline, you can't attain. Before I went to bed last night, I, 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 I outlined all the things I will do when I wake up in the morning. And I made up my mind I was going to wake up by four. I woke up around that four, but there was no power, no light. So I waited. Around two five, the thing came. Because I made up my mind I want to pray for one hour. And while I'm praying for that one hour, I want to do certain things around. So exactly as it turned on the light, I started my, I stood up, brushed my teeth, started my one hour prayer and the thing I wanted to be doing alongside I was doing and I didn't stop until I was able to attain my one hour past six I stopped praying the body doesn't want to do it but we are disciplined are we? that's why one of the powers that God has given us as the gift of the Holy Spirit is what? self-control Galatians 5 let's go to back to it we studied it on Sunday Galatians 5 22 and 23. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And how do you attain this fruit of self-control? You want to relax. Holy Ghost will not agree. I know one thing with the Holy Ghost that I love about the Holy Ghost is that He will use uh, the sign, look up, that you are used to. Do you know that some of you, you are used to this sign, look up. Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't understand me. Do you get me? So we all respond to different kinds of signs. Like someone like me now, me, I used to respond. I, I respond very well when I'm under prayer. If they tell me that this thing remains two days to end. I will perform. Thomas it remains one year. But two days to ah, when it comes on two millionaire, who they could two days. Can you close? I'm telling you. That's one, that's how me I that's why when I'm under pressure, I am I'm always performing best. And the Holy Ghost knows how to deal with me like that. There are certain things he won't tell me on time. He'll just tell me, son. Do you know that by 12 o'clock today? So that's we have. By 12? And you see that my, the wisdom of God will be active in my life. Now, some of you doesn't move like that. To so some of you, once you see that, uh, uh, some of you, you are relaxed, you are not moved, but when you hear a testimony of somebody, you are challenged. Now, look at Galatians 5. We are talking about self-control now. You have to discipline yourself. Galatians 5, are you there? 22, the fruit of the... But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. We, we treated this on Sunday. But look at verse 23. The last fruit of the Holy Spirit. It says gentleness and what was the last one? Self-control. 
It's not a gift. It's a fruit. So if it's a gift, you can control, you can't control yourself. Holy Ghost will control it for you. But it's a fruit that you have to manifest. Are you getting what I'm saying? So even when the thing is not convenient for you to do, but you know that this is the plan we have. This is the plan we have. You see that you, you gather yourself to reach it. So I hear. When me and my wife conclude, when we had Oriola, we decided we are not having babies again. Yes, we decided we are not having babies again. These three. And we disciplined ourselves by the grace of God to avoid making mistakes. And up to now, we are still disciplining ourselves. So to attain your plan, what's the last one? Apply self-discipline to attain it. Let's take the third lesson. I told you I will teach you three things today. What's the first one we studied today? God demonstrated his love for us when he gave his only son to redeem us from the bondage of sin and Satan. So every Easter, always remember that God demonstrated his love. And what's number two? Second lesson. Easter is also, should, should also teach us that God had a long-term plan, planning system, a plan. He planned that Jesus would be crucified. Fat, you know, and Jesus came and he built him for that assignment for 33 years. That you as a child of God, there's nothing bad in you having long-term plan. Now, number three. Jesus was faced with temptation the moment he was ready to start pursuing purpose. We see that in Matthew chapter 4. Jesus was faced with temptation the moment he was ready to start pursuing purpose. Why? Now we know all what happened in Matthew 4. If you are the son of God, turn stone to bread. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone. Number two, he said, after all, he said he will give his angels charge over you. Why not jump from this mountain? Jesus said, man should not tempt, uh, man should not tempt the Lord his God. Then number three, he came up, he said, look at all these things. They are in my power. Bow down to me and I will give to you. Jesus our Lord said, man should not worship any other one but the most high. He passed temptation. Why did the devil set temptation for Jesus? I wrote down this way. The devil knew that the purpose of God over man cannot change. But he can use sin to change the man chosen for the purpose of God. The devil knows that the purpose of God over man cannot change. But he can use sin to change the man God has chosen to carry out his divine purpose. Now, I will explain. Labels. Now, when we talk about divine purpose, everyone pay attention. The devil knows that he cannot do anything to stop the purpose of God. But until Satan is man, he will go back to the same thing. 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 He Do you get what I'm saying? The purpose of the Lord is to go back to the same thing. But I want to go back to the same thing. I want to go back to the same thing. Lati fi mu ileri eshe lo ye ko ki sara gidigan we that are chosen for his purpose we must be careful the devil cannot fight god he is not going to fight god over what god wants to do but he wants to fight you and me so that we will no longer be qualified do you understand what i'm saying you know what god said to to, to king Saul he said today your kingdom over israel will have been established forever imagine but because of this thing that you have done, 
sheri opolopo ti ileri olorun ye ninu aye won ki se ileri lo ye awon ni won ye kuro lona ileri ton ruke olorun de so fun mi pe engin ma de bi bayi olorun de so ileri bayi olorun se fun mi they didn't know that when they went into sin and can i tell you the truth the only thing that the devil uses to make man to fall out of god's plan is sin That's why he came with temptation to Jesus. Oti wo ah ah ulubalara ilele leni yo. This is the measure of the art. How what can I do? Ileri olonu deli ye o ah je kin tete je kin tete shi lono kuma kuma ba ye fun ileri yemo. Jesus, you are hungry, Abi. Jesus, I've been fasting forty days and forty nights. I've not eaten. Oh yeah, if you are the son of God, turn stone to bread. It's not that Jesus could not turn stone to bread. But if Jesus turned stone to bread at that time, he obeyed Satan. And what does it mean to fall into temptation? It means that you obeyed the devil. But Jesus said, no. Man shall not live by bread alone. Satan is Okay. Bible it is written in the word that you cannot you will not dash your, your foot against a stone it's there in the bible that's okay jump from this i mean jump he will catch you if jesus had jumped from the mountain he would have died and what would have happened the purpose of god would have gone to somebody else now don't forget the purpose of god will not change but there are people on the bench waiting to replace those that cannot make it. I will not be replaced. I want you one more. I'm telling you. Maru Kiboya, eh, Tibashi will alone only lue lue me. Talo sofu embe. Jesus told him instantly, ah, you cannot tempt the Lord your God. Ah, Satan said, oh, what to pass? He came again. He said, look, the Bible said he took him to the height of the mountain and said, look at all these belong to me. Look, what are you doing? I'm going to tell you about my phone. Jesus, our Lord, knew where he was going. He told him again. He said, worship the Lord your God and only him shall you worship. The Bible says, and the devil left him for a time. Don't let the purpose of God over your life change. Anytime we are telling you, uh, serve God. You know what we are telling you? Stay in the lane that will make the purpose of God for your life to come to pass. Sometimes to bati to obo ese iliri yen le ye lori e but that same purpose another person will come and fulfill it that's one truth that the devil knows and that's what he's doing even up to now bringing people down you now be saying ah there are so many prophecies that were spoken about this person when he was born. What is happening? We didn't see anyone. He missed it somewhere. May you not miss it. I say, may you not miss it. You know, the same thing. God promised David that his generation will rule forever. But when he got to Solomon, he changed his mind. He said, but I won't bring it to pass in your time. In the, in the days when your son become king, that's when I'll bring it to pass. That's why I see, if you are here in this service or you are watching online, if there's any way that you yourself know that, ah, ah, so I will not fall from the path of God's uh, a glory for my life, promise for my life. You know what you should do? Repent. Turn back to God. Pray for his mercy and tell him to help you so that his plans for your life will come to pass. That's another lesson from Easter. 
On Sunday, in the two services, we are going to look at more of those lessons. In the first service, you'll be taught on how to discover the purpose of God for your life. But don't forget, I'm saying it again. The devil knows that the purpose of God over man cannot change. But he can use sin to change the man God has chosen to carry out his divine purpose. May we not be replaced. Oh God. Bow down your and begin to pray. Lord, use me. Help me, oh God, that I will not fall from your plan. Begin to pray. Pray for yourself. Help me, Lord. If I had fallen in the past, Lord, show me mercy. If I've missed it somehow, Lord, show me mercy. Mercy, Lord. This Easter, I ask for your mercy so that your plan for my life will remain. Are you praying? Bale gadaba senele mosene Shagada baskenele mosene Re gadaba sata ya gadaba skene Say Lord use me, Lord uphold me Help me that I will not fall to temptation That wants to carry me away May I not fall into the temptation That wants to carry me away, O God Oluwama yake in shubu sinu ndawotu Fek be mi kuro lono Begin to pray No matter how the wicked is setting it Help me that I will not fall Are you praying for yourself this evening? We have a few minutes now before we begin to take the anointed bread and wine, the flesh and the blood of our Lord Jesus. Basata yagada baskin. Regada baskin de leseke. Shagada baskin de lemosene. Begin to pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to remain faithful. Help me, Lord, to remain faithful. Keep me on the path of righteousness. For your name's sake, O oh God. Are you praying? Say, Lord, in any way I've missed my path, bring me back to the right path, O God. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want us to bless the bread. Father, in the name of Jesus.